This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone, welcome to 3 News Daily on this Wednesday, September 13th. Thank you for being with us here in Northeast Ohio. I'm Stephanie Haney and we start in Akron today where Police Chief Steve Milette announced yesterday he'll be retiring by the end of the year. He says the decision comes after many factors were considered, one of which was the pressure he was faced with from the community following the police killing of Jayland Walker. Milet said in a statement to 3 News that the past year has been difficult for many and regaining what the Akron community lost will not be easy. His tenure was certainly overshadowed by the tragedy. What has taken up most of the time over the last year has been the killing of Jalen Walker, this terrible tragedy that this community experienced. That was the presumptive Akron Mayor Shamas Malik, and he hopes to have the search for a new police chief complete by the new year. Now to Euclid, where police arrested a man after he allegedly shot a 10-year-old girl. 32-year-old Kenneth Hatton Moreland is now facing a felonious assault charge and is being held on a $150,000 bond. Police say he allegedly started shooting at someone else Monday afternoon and instead shot the girl in the arm while she was standing in her own yard. She's recovering today. Now we're learning more about the driving record of a school bus driver involved in the latest crash in this one that injured five children in Stark County. 58 year old Deborah Weisel has received eight citations since 1991, including for not properly buckling up a child and also for three rear end crashes. The bus accident happened on the same day that Governor Mike DeWine's new school bus safety task force met for the first time. And now people are wondering if a bus driver shortage has school districts lowering their standards. We have a working group that is looking at this. Uh, I've told them to look at every piece of evidence that, they, that there is. Now here in Ohio, a driver can't operate a school bus if they have more than six points on their license in the last two years, if they've been convicted of an OVI in the last 10 years, or committed a railroad crossing violation in the last year. School districts can have more stringent qualifications. Weisel is now on administrative leave. Meanwhile, members of a church in Old Brooklyn are asking for help after it's, it's broken into three times in the last week. A ring security camera shows the thieves taking thousands of dollars in equipment from Refine Church. They also stole most of the flooring the church had just bought, a water filtration system, and Christmas gifts the church had been collecting. If you recognize the truck or the people in this video, you're asked to please call the Cleveland police. All right, we have a date. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has announced when they will break ground on a $135 million expansion project. The 50,000 square foot expansion will increase the size of the museum by a third. It'll include a new entrance lobby, a state-of-the-art education center, and on-site archives for visitors to access. Construction will start October 5th, coming up soon. All right, now the Guardians played another late night baseball game last night in San Francisco, and this time the outcome went the guards way to end a three game losing streak. The game was tied one to one in the sixth inning. That's when Tyler Freeman got the go ahead two run single to give Cleveland the three to one lead, and that would be the final, thankfully. Now the Guardians are still seven and a half games back from the first place twins with 16 le games left to play in the regular season. The Guardians and the Giants finish their three-game series today. That first pitch is set for 345. A lot of Northeast Ohio talent on America's Got Talent this year. Canton's own Zion Clark was there last night taking the stage in a mesmerizing performance. Last month, the 25-year-old wowed the AGT judges with an inspirational audition. And during last night's live performance, Clark did not disappoint. He muscled his way through an obstacle course and ended with a performance on the drums. And while judges Howie Mandel, Heidi Klum, and Sofia Vergara sang his praises, it was Simon Cowell who had the audience roaring. I loved your first audition. When I watched it back, I loved it even more. And I tell you what I think you've just done. I think you've just booked yourself a place in the final in two weeks' time. Oh, Simon, we certainly hope so. We will find out if he's right tonight at 8 when two more acts move forward to the finals. You can watch that, remember, right here on NBC. You're not going to want to miss it. America's Got Talent, again, tonight, right here on NBC at 8 p.m. 
All right, now for our question of the day. Lots of people are calling for an NSYNC reunion tour after their video music awards performance, appearance rather, last night. So we want to know what throwback band or artist would you like to see go on tour? Post your comment to the WKYC Facebook page and in our 3 News in the Afternoon Facebook group. We'll talk about it during 3 News at 4 and 3 News at 5. I know one person was very happy to see them together. That was Taylor Swift when she was getting her award from them. She said she had their dolls. Didn't we all? Okay, thank you very much for watching today's edition of 3 News Daily. Wherever you're watching or listening, we appreciate you. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of what matters most to you in Northeast Ohio. Bye.